church said I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus name and the Lord revive us revive you with something inside you that will climb every mountain in Jesus name father we thank you for your servants our leaders thank you for the leadership development tonight we pray, Lord, you lift everyone up in Jesus' name. Move us forward, every brother and every sister, that will grow in the Lord in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at James chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 14. And verse 15 James chapter 5 verse 14 is any sick among you let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. In that verse 14, it talks about the elders of the church. The elders of the church. That's what we are concentrating on tonight. We're here as leaders. And the Bible in this passage refers to us as elders why elders in the church elders of the church and the reason why we come together is that we will know our responsibility not only that we know we will be equipped to function as elders in the church of the living god so tonight we're looking at the word of god on equipping church elders for effective ministry equipping training energizing helping church leaders for effective ministry that those words the elders will also find in first peter chapter 5 first peter chapter 5 verse 1 the elders which are among you i exhort is writing to all the local churches and every local church has elders it says the elders which are among you i exhort who am also an elder an apostle an elder a preacher an elder an evangelist in the church an elder a pastor a teacher of the word an elder he says i'm also an elder a witness of the sufferings of christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed what are those elders to do verse 2 feed the flock of god which is among you feed the church which is among you titus chapter 1 in titus chapter 1 verse 5 for this cause let i thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders in every city the church is there in every city appoint ordain establish elders plural elders in every city as i had appointed thee and then from verse 6 he gives the spiritual qualifications of those elders now verse 9 what they are to do holding fast the faithful word as she has been taught that she may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort that's the elders responsibility to exhort and to convince the gainsayers 
Tonight, as we look at this James chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, I will talk about equipping church leaders for effective ministry. I pray the Lord will equip every one of us, brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. Let's come back to James chapter 5, verse 14. He said, You seek among you, let him call for the elders of the church, and let them, those elders, pray over him, anointing him with oil, a symbol, an emblem of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Lord. And whatsoever we will ask in the name of the Lord, he will do it in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one, total healing through trustworthy elders in the congregation. Total healing through trustworthy elders in the congregation. Point number two, the history of teaching elders in the church. Where did it start? Appointing elders in the church, putting elders within every church, and giving them responsibilities. Where did it start? How did it continue? And how has it come to James as well as Post Peter? The history of teaching elders in the church. Point number three, the hesitation of timid elders in the camp. You see what the Lord has called us to do. It says the elders are to pray for the sick. Why don't the elders do that? The elders are to teach and teach convincingly and effectively. Why don't those elders do it? Because some of the elders are timid. They are fearful. And what the Lord has called them to do, they are not applying themselves to do. You will be energized by the word of God in Jesus' name. There will be no hesitation in your ministry. And there will be no failure, no trembling, no timidity in your ministry in Jesus' name. Number one, total healing through trustworthy elders in the congregation. Let's come to Leviticus chapter 4 and see where elders of the congregation where they came in in Leviticus chapter 4 reading from verse 14 this is talking about a congregation that had done wrong but they didn't know and as a result when they eventually knew the elders had a part in their forgiveness and in their atonement Verse 14, Leviticus chapter 4. When the sin which day the congregation sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him, that is the offering, the young bullock, before the tabernacle of the congregation. Look at verse 15 now. And the elders of the congregation the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands upon the head of the bullock before the Lord, and the bullock shall be killed before the Lord. And so you see the involvement of the elders of the congregation. There's a congregation, assembly, fellowship of believers, and they have elders in that congregation. A problem has happened as a reason. And the elders are to be part of the solution. You'll be part of the solution. We're not to be part of the problem. We're to be part of the solution. Is there sin? The elders of the congregation will bring solution. Is there sickness? The elders of the congregation will bring solution. Is there affliction? Is there defeat? Is there any problem anywhere within that congregation? The elders of the congregation will bring solution. Talking about sickness, the elders of the congregation, 
in Genesis, there was no real congregation. And yet, there were people that stood in the place of elders. That is, elders, they, are, they were higher than the people that had problems, and they were nearer to God. And because of that nearness to God, they acted as elders, and the Lord heard their prayers. I want you to underline the word trustworthy in that point one. Trustworthy elders. And in our churches, if we are trustworthy, in our churches, if the people have confidence in us and they trust us and they know that God has appointed us and on that basis, when they have challenge and when they have problem, they are not looking beyond that congregation. They are not looking far away somewhere to get the problem solved. The elders of that congregation in whom we have trust because God placed them there. They, they will bring healing and deliverance. And I pray that revival of miracles will start in all our congregations in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 20 of Genesis verse 7. Now therefore restore the man his wife. For he is a prophet, that's what God said. And he shall pray for thee. Remember when you come to the New Testament, he gave some apostles and some prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. And these are referred to as elders in the New Testament. And God said, he's a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. That's what God said. And that brought the conviction in the heart of Abimelech that Absalom, whatever I knew about him, whatever I thought he shouldn't have done, whatever I thought he shouldn't have pushed me into, and he pushed me into this, and now I have this problem, God said he is a prophet. Not that he was, he is a prophet, and God said go to him. And they will pray for you, and you will be healed. That's what makes us trustworthy. Because the Lord has put you there as an elder, and the Lord has said, Is any sick among you in the congregation? Let him call on the elders. That's already trustworthiness. That the power had been deposited in those elders, and when we pray, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Look at verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech. Abraham prayed as an elder. Abraham prayed as a prophet that the Almighty God has told, has told this man he was, and the Lord answered. All of us who are here at the Leadership Development uh, Tuesday meeting where elders coming from at various churches. And the Lord had said, if anyone has any challenge, any problem in our local churches, they should call on us. And that when we pray, God has given us the assurance, He will answer. When you pray, what are you? God is going to answer. Any sickness, any problem in those places where you come from, thank God now, because God has appointed you. And he has referred to you as elder. And he has referred the people to you when they have problems. You are trustworthy in the congregation. They will be healed. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes. Then he says, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that does what? That he lets thee. I am the Lord that he lets thee. We the elders are not the healers. He is the healer, but he has directed the members to us and he has channeled, he has promised to channel his power through us. And so when those people come, they seek in your congregation 
and you happen to be an elder and they're obeying the word of God, if you shall be gently hearken to what I have told you, and you will obey the word of God, they have read the word of God that when they are sick, they shall call on the elders of the church and they have done their part and they have come to you and you will do your part now. There's going to be healing in that congregation. I'm looking at Psalm 105 and I'm reading from verse 37. The important word is trustworthiness. God trusts us. And he places us in the congregation as elders. Our members, they look up to us and they respect us and they honor us. And when they have any problem, they don't think about who you are as a person. They know that God has put you there as an elder. When you pray, they know that you are trustworthy. God is going to answer. We're looking at Psalm 105, and I'm reading from verse 37. In verse 37, he brought them forth also with silver and gold. Remember, it was Moses that was the intermediary between the children of Israel and God. And when God wanted them to have the gold and the silver, he told Moses, and Moses told them, and they did exactly what the elder, what Moses had told them, because of that good relationship, the trustworthiness. All you might have been thinking about, the Egyptians will not listen. They shouldn't think about that. The Egyptians will not respond. Don't think about that. The elder appointed by God over the congregation of this light said, God told me to tell you. You should ask the Egyptians. All the uh, benefits you have been to them, they have not paid you. Now they are going to pay you. And the people did. And then it says, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. It's trustworthiness. It's as you trust that elder, as you trust that leader. And you know, God placed him there. And God has put the word in his mouth. And if I do what he's telling me to do, I'm going to be well. You are well. I'm going to be strong. You are strong. You will not remain feeble in Jesus' name. Look at Matthew chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 1. Matthew chapter 10. Reading from verse 1. It tells us in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, talking about the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. We're talking about the twelve disciples. And the Lord himself now referred to them as the elders. And he sent them forth. And he gave them authority. He gave them power over all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. You know what? The people who were sick, where they were going, they didn't see when he gave them the power. And the people they are going to pray for, they didn't see the transmission of that power into their lives. But Jesus Christ had transmitted the power to them. And he did it by just speaking to them. didn't give them any injection. didn't even lay hands on them. He just gave it to them. I give you, I give you, I give you. And I'm sending you forth. There is trust between Christ and those apostles. He said, we can do it, so we can do it. He's sending us forth to go and do it, so we will do it. It's the same thing. You're an elder, and you're learning now that if anyone is sick, that the sick should come to you. And instead of you saying, I cannot, you don't say that anymore. You trust the Lord. The Lord said it shall come to me. And that if it come to me, I will pray the prayer of faith and they will be healed. That trustworthiness. You trust the Lord who has appointed you. And the people in the congregation that are sick, 
they trust the Lord and they trust you. They trust you that you are appointed there to minister to their need whenever they're there. That trustworthiness will produce the healing and the miracle in Jesus' name. Verse 7, it says, as she go preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. He told them. He couldn't have told them to do what he couldn't do. He just told them, I have given you the power. You may not feel any sensation of heat. You may not feel taller. You may not feel bigger. You may not feel any inspiration. But I have given you. It is not by feeling. You don't feel your brain, but your brain is there. And you don't feel your lungs, but your lungs are there. You don't have any feeling, I'm checking up, is my kidney all right? But you know the kidneys are there. You don't feel the marrow inside your bone, but they're there. He gave them to you. In the same way, he has appointed you an elder. And he gave you the power, he said, heal the sea, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely ye have received. And freely give. Have I received? Somebody there, have you received? You will be able to give it out in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, I read from verses 1 and 2. Luke chapter 10. Verses 1 and 2. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. Don't worry about your title. The Lord appointed other 70 also. He had appointed the 12 in an earlier chapter, which we have read in Matthew, but she's recorded in Luke chapter 9. And now in Luke chapter 10, another set of elders. And these ones, 17. And then he sent them two by two, two and two before his face, into every city and place whither he himself will come. He sent them to 35 locations all at the same time. And he said, therefore said he unto them, the harvest really is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. He will send forth. He sent the twelve. Those were the elders then. He sent the seventy. Those were the elders then. And pray that he will send more of those elders. And everyone he sends, he sends with authority. And you need to have that trust. He sent me, and because he sent me, and he said, this is what I ought to do, it is that trust in his word, in his appointment, that gets it done. Verse 3, go your way. Behold, I sent you forth as lambs among wolves. And then he tells us in verse 6, he says in verse 9, rather, in verse 9, and heal the sick that are therein. And he didn't qualify or name the sickness. Heal the sick that are therein. Some will be having long time sickness, heal them. Some just got sick recently, heal them. Some have a kind of a destructive a disease, heal them. And some have what they call incurable disease, heal them. He didn't specify. He just said, I'm sending you forth. And I don't send forth people who are going to fail. I send you forth and you are going to succeed. He's sending you forth, you will succeed in Jesus' name. Heal the sick that are therein and say unto them. He told them what to say. The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. The power of the kingdom has come unto you. They went like you are going to go. They succeeded like you are going to succeed. They didn't fail like you will not fail. You must do what he has said. And the word is based on trust. You trust him. It's not your gender. You're a man, you're a woman. That's not the point. It is not your knowledge. 
you have this, now you have that, 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 that's not the point. The point is, he has sent you. And once he has appointed you, and now he has told the people, if you have any sickness, if you have any challenge, if there's any sick among you within the congregation, let him call for the elders of the church. And they will lay hands on him, and he will recover. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Look at their testimony in verse 17. And the 70 returned again, tell me, with joy. Your ministry will have joy. Say, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld, hold on, hold on. They didn't see this. They didn't see Satan falling to the ground. They didn't see Satan paralyzed. They didn't see Satan in age as soon as he sent them forth. And he gave them authority. Then even the powers in the air fell because of them. As I sent you forth, all the hindrances you might be thinking about, those hindrances are gone. You may not see it, you may not even feel it, but Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power. He has not given you weakness. Behold, I give you power. He has not given you timidity or fear. Behold, I give unto you power to trench on serpents and scorpions and over all the power over all the power, over all the power, because he sent you forth, and because you are elders, and because he has given you something to do, which must be done, and because he has not given that assignment to any other one, you are the elders in your congregation, and you are supposed to pray for them, and they will recover. Because of that, he gives you special protection. And then he says you are protected from all the power of the enemy. Evil powers cannot touch you. And people who are destructive, they cannot ruin your life. You are a special person because of your appointment. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this rejoice not. That the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because, because, because your names are written in heaven. And Satan cannot go there to touch that name. And Satan cannot go there to remove that name. He has given you a responsibility and he has given you the resources to carry those responsibilities out. James chapter 5, James chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 16. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. It's talking about us in the congregation. That even if they say, you know, uh, Pastor, it's uh, my carelessness that brought this. That's all right. Confess your faults one to another. And it is, uh, I, I should have been warned. And the Lord warned me not to go this direction. And I went there. And I see what has happened to me. No, that's all right. Confess your faults one to another. And then after that, pray one for another. That ye may be healed. I see that this way coming, many are going to get healed. And as the, you know, you have been thinking, you are waiting for another person, waiting for another person, is the elder in the congregation. And then it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, of a righteous woman, availeth much. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Point number two now. In point number two, the history of teaching elders in the church. As we talk about the church and we're talking about elders where did it all begin uh, let's first of all look at first peter chapter five and let us understand there are elders in the church there are members of the church there are ministers in the church there are converts in the church there are elders in the church 
and we cannot put one for the other. We're looking at First Peter chapter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, I counsel, I command, I instruct, who am also an elder. I'm an apostle, but I'm an elder. And the witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Now these elders, here is what they are to do. Feed the flock of God which is among you. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The faith to get saved comes by hearing. And the faith to be certain of our forgiveness comes by hearing. The faith for freedom caused by hearing the faith for total deliverance they say you know this one is walking there that one is walking there you will reinteach them by teaching by feeding them you will give them the word of god and the word of god which brings light will drive away all the superstition all the tradition all the erroneous belief you feed them with the word that brings faith to them the faith that overcomes and the faith that makes them have dominion over every challenge of life feed the flock of god which is among you taking the oversight thereof not by constraint that is when you do it you don't do it as if uh, you know somebody is pushing you to do it they're imposing the ministry on you enjoy the teaching enjoy the privilege enjoy the preaching enjoy the fact that the lord has raised you up to be a blessing to the people not by constraint but willing not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Not because we're looking for money or looking for material gain, just the joy of being a help to somebody, the joy of assisting somebody and lifting them up. And then it says, Neither has been lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory which fadeth not away he will reward you in jesus name the history of teaching elders in the church how did it begin where did these elders where did they start numbers chapter 11. numbers chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 16 numbers 11 we're reading from verse 16. It says in verse 16, Numbers 11, And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men, Look at this, Of the elders of Israel. Gather unto me seventy men Of the elders of Israel, Whom thou knowest to be elders of the people. They are both the people in knowledge, they are both the people in understanding, they are both the people in love, they are both the people in consecration. You know them to be elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. Moses, you are the overall elder in the congregation of the children of Israel, but Bring others, their elders too, and they will stand with thee. Verse 17, and I will come down and talk with thee there. And I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people the challenges of the people, the pressures of the people, the adversities of the people, the complaints of the people, they shall bear the burden of the people with thee. That's the purpose. That's why it started. That's why it started. That Moses was there and he could not bear, he could not uh, touch every life and he could not solve every problem just one person cannot do all that for those millions of people and so god said bring elders 
and I will put the same spirit, Holy Ghost, in you. I'll put it upon them, and they will bear the burden with thee. Elders are burden bearers. That's why if somebody gets sick, if somebody um, is jobless, if somebody has wayward children, if somebody has a challenge that he could not bear all alone by himself, that's why the elders of the congregation, elders in the church, that's why they are there, were to bear the body. Everything is not to be led to Moses. Everything is not to be led to the senior pastor. Everything is not to be led to just one man. But the elders will bear the bodies with him. Look at Exodus chapter 19. Exodus chapter 19. Reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 19 verse 7. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people. They are always available. They are elders. They are to bear the body in with the leadership. They are elders. And any time they are called upon, there's a problem there. Let's go and solve it. And it's a challenge there. Let's resolve it. And there is another crisis there. Let us put everything right. There's fire burning here. Let us put it up. It says, and Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him, all the words that were given to Moses, now he gave to these elders. And these elders are to go one by one to their local congregations in their various tribes and tell the people, look at verse 8, and all the people answered together and said, all that the Lord has spoken we will do. And those elders motivated them and mobilized them for obedience and also for the blessings of the Lord. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. We're coming to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32, where it all began. The elders of the, in the church. That concept began in the Old Testament, and they were to bear the burden with uh, the overall leader. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, I'm reading from verse 7. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 7. Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father. Remember, but we, have, we don't even know what happened. Don't come and ask me. Ask thy father, and he will show thee. Ask thy elders, and they will tell thee, the elders no more, of the history of the church more than the average member. And the elders no more of the great wonders of God in the midst of the people of God more than all the members. And so if the members have any question, if the members have any challenge, I have confusion here. Can God do this? Has God done, done this in the past? Is God able to solve my problem? Is he able to remove the yoke in my life? Ask thy elders and they will tell thee. And as we tell them, faith will come up and grow up in them. Their problems are solved already in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 31. Joshua chapter 24, verse 31. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders, the elders that outlived Joshua. These elders had been bearing the body of Joshua when he was alive. And these elders, many of them were younger in age than Joshua. And these elders had been influenced by Joshua, had been instructed by Joshua, had been inspired by Joshua, had been raised up by Joshua. And they kept what they were given. 
and they received the training and they kept the training that Arthur Joshua had passed on then the congregation could look up to those elders and all through the days of those elders that overlaid Joshua they were obedient to the Lord and were going stronger and stronger it says which had known all the works of the Lord which he had done for Israel and let's say now come after Joshua you have all the all the other books like um, Nehemiah, Ezra, Esther, Job, and the Psalms, and Proverbs, and everything uh, up to Malachi. For things changed that the elders forgot what they were to teach. The elders forgot what they were to emphasize. And by the time you come to the New Testament in Mark chapter 7, Mark chapter 7 reading from verse 5 mark chapter 7 reading from verse 5 uh, let's see now it says how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrine the commandments of men you see the change that happened little by little they began to bring their own opinions and their own ideas and they forgot god appointed them there to be elders so that the word of the Lord alone may be taught and the word of the Lord alone will be what they emphasize verse 8 for laying aside the commandment of God ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other things of things ye do and he said unto them, For well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. Look at verse 13. Making void the word of God, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. You see these people, all they were thinking about now will just be the tradition of the elders, the opinions of the elders. Look at verse 5. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders? According to the tradition of of the elders but thank god the holy ghost came to the church and the church was established as the church was established then the real ministry of the elders came back we're coming to acts chapter 14 acts chapter 14 reading from verse 21 acts 14 verse 21 and when they had preached the gospel to that city and I taught many. They returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation, trial, temptations, enter into the kingdom of God. Look at verse 23. And when they had ordained them tell me elders in every church the ordained they appointed they established elders in every church elders in the plural elders in the plural some of them men some of them women but they have oversight of different sections in that local church elders the ordained and then they commended them to the Lord on whom they had believed because they had teaching ministry, they had healing ministry, and they had the ministry of solving problems. Let's look at chapter 15. Chapter 15 of Acts in verse 6. And the apostles and the elders came together to, for to consider this matter 
a problem had arisen in the early church and some of the converts were being told they should go and keep the law of Moses they should be circumcised otherwise their salvation was not complete and to resolve that problem they called the apostles not only the apostles the elders and they all came together to consider the matter when he considered the matter, look at verse 22. Then pleased each the apostles and the elders after they reached a conclusion. The elders were there, the apostles were there, and they saw that these gentle believers should not be circumcised. Already they are saved, and they are saved through their faith in the blood of the Lamb. And he said that was enough, and the elders together with the apostles, with the whole church, sent chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, so named Basabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. They wrote to them what should be the standard of their faith and the standard for their faith. Look at chapter 16. Chapter 16, reading from verse 4. And as they went through the cities, they delivered them the decrees for to keep, which were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem. They went from church to church, and they communicated with the leadership of all those local churches all these words of God that had been ordained by the elders of the church, the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem. So you see the important part and the significant position of elders in the church. They are not just there, they are there for a purpose. And the Lord has allowed that. And from the Old Testament, we are tracing the history of how those elders, how they came, and you are significant as elders and leaders in the church. Acts chapter 20. Verse 17, Acts chapter 20, verse 17. And for my letters, he said to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. He said to Ephesus, he wanted to give them a farewell message. And he couldn't go to all the various locations and were told that he said he was in uh, Miletus and then he sent to Ephesus and all the local churches there and called the elders of the church. And then he continued talking to them. Look at verse 26. Wherefore, still talking to the elders, I take you to record this day that I'm pure from the blood of all men. For I have not charged to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Now he's talking to the elders. What did he tell them? Verse 28, Take each therefore, elders, unto yourselves, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers. He called them elders in verse 17. And now he called them overseers in verse 28. What were they to do? Feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. The place the Lord has given us, we will not quit. We will not run away. We will fulfill his calling upon our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. First Timothy 5, 17. The elders that rule well. Now, is bringing another area to the ministry of the elders. They are organizers. They organize well. They rule well. They direct the membership of the church and they direct well. And they have administrative assignment and they do good administration. It says the elders that rule well be counted of double honor. 
honor them, respect them. Actually, it is the respect we have for them that makes us to have the trustworthiness that when we're sick or when we have any problem, because we honor them, we respect them, and we know that God has put them there, and we know them to be faithful. Then we go to them when they pray for us, God will answer their prayers for us. I was waiting for good amen. amen. Let the elders that true will be counted of worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. They labor in word and doctrine. Titus chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. For this cause, let I thee encourage that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, the things that are lacking. And after Titus had set those things in order, he will not be available physically in every local church. All those things that are set in order is the elders in each of those local churches that will maintain them that will make sure that we don't go back again to the things we used to do. It says that, that you set everything in order, the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. You know how you were appointed, and now you will look for elders who will assist you who will carry the body and bear the body with you. In the same way, you will appoint those elders. What will you be looking for? If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop, he called them elders in verse 5. Now he's calling them bishop in verse 7. For a bishop must be blameless as the servant of God, not self-willed, not so angry, not giving to wine, no striker, not giving to feel the looker. She not have the love of money controlling his life, but a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate. Those are the elders that Titus was to appoint. And those are the kinds of elders we are to appoint. Look at verse 9. Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. He is not holding the word of God with a loose hand. He holds fast the word of God as he has been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine. That's the elder. That's the elder. He should be able. He should have the ability uh, by sound doctrine to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. When the elders are strong, the church will be strong. When the elders are weak, the church will be weak. Our church will not be weak. I said our church will not be weak. Point number three now, the hesitation of timid elders in the camp. The hesitation of timid elders in the camp. Look at Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. And I'm reading from verse 1. Numbers chapter 13. Reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers, shall ye send a man, every one a ruler, every one a leader, every one an elder among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, and all those men were heads, they were elders, of the children of Israel. You know the story? They went and then he came back. Verse 26. In verse 26, and they went and came to Moses and came to Aaron 
and he came to all the congregation. Remember, there are elders over congregations, so are different parts of the congregation, of the whole tribes of Israel, and of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and unto the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And he told him, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. And surely, if lois with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. But now, their timidity, timid elders, will cause hesitation. Instead of going forth, going through, going in, possessing, uh, at that same time, no, they hesitated. Nevertheless, verse 28, the people, the stronger that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled, and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it and the men those elders that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we they are stronger than we are you see that timidity that's why the children of Israel hesitated and they could not enter in. Look at chapter 14. Chapter 14, verse 3. And wherefore, as the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and children uh, should be a prey, were it not better for us to return into Egypt? The hesitation was caused by those elders. I pray we will not be like that. Did you say amen? amen. Exodus chapter 32. Exodus chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, oh, Make us gods, we shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, well, what not what is become of him? Now God called Moses to come to the mountain top. He went to the mountain top to get the law from the Lord. But the Lord did not tell him how many days will be spending there. And so they waited and waited, and Moses did not come. That's the elder they related with, and the elder at home era. That they were to know if they had any challenge, any misgiving, any question about this Moses, what has happened to him. They should have gone to Aaron and they should have asked. And that was the present elder. But the present elder himself, he was timid. And because of his timidity, that's why he couldn't give them the right answer. And eventually, look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down for thy people, which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt. They have corrupted themselves. You know the story. But let's learn something about Moses. It wasn't his fault, but he went away. And he couldn't see him. And he couldn't tell how long he would still stay. And because he delayed his coming, that's how the whole congregation and the whole nation, that's how they backslid. Elders are very important. You as an elder in that local church, if you're always away, always away, they cannot relate with you. And you delay your coming. And you say, I want to just dash home. I want to get to this place, get to that place. And you are gone. One week you are gone. Two weeks you are gone. Three weeks you are gone. 
and we don't know when you are coming back, it brings discouragement to the hearts of the congregation. That's why they went to Aaron, and the Aaron they went to did not help matters. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, look at what it says. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast brought so great is seen upon them? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot, that knowest the people, they are set on mischief. They are set on mischief. I fear them. They could stone me, you understand? They could rough handle me, you understand? And they could do anything to me. And once they want something, you know, they want that thing. And so, because I didn't want their trouble, that's why I gave them what they wanted. Timid elders will cause a situation in obeying the word of God. We're coming to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 24. Matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 24 another parable put ye forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field and while men slept while men slept we who are elders we need to be vigilant we who are elders we need to be available we who are elders, we need to be sharp-sighted that we are there with our congregation every time. If error is coming in, you are sharp-sighted. If carelessness is coming in, you are sharp-sighted. And if false doctrine is coming in, you are sharp-sighted. But it says, while men slept, his enemy came and so tears among the wheat and went his way. If we go to sleep, and if we become careless, and if we are no more vigilant, this is the kind of thing that happens. That the enemy comes and he sows the tears into the harvest field. Look at uh, verse 28. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. But he couldn't do that if the elders were awake. It's only when the elders sleep. When men slept, then that happened. Look at verse 38. The, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. And, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. Is waiting behind there is waiting around there and if the elders sleep many dangerous things destructive things could happen we're coming to first timothy chapter one in first timothy chapter one i'm reading from verse three first timothy chapter one reading from verse three as i besought thee to abide still at ephesus timothy be a good elder Timothy, be a good evangelist. Timothy, be a good pastor. Abide. Stay. Don't be far away from the congregation. The Lord has appointed you to be there so that you will protect, oversee the congregation. I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine that's the responsibility of a leader by the way look at verse 18 of that same chapter verse 18 this charge i commit unto this son timothy according to the prof prophecies which were before on thee went before on thee that thou by them mightest war a good warfare you will be bold you'll be courageous earnestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints holding faith and a good conscience which some 
having put away concerning the faith have made shipwreck. Some have made shipwreck. And if we elders do not stand and stay at our post, that's what will happen to the people. Our people, your people, your congregation will not make shipwreck of the faith in Jesus' name. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 17. Their words will eat as does a canker. When the elder is not around, when the elders are not around, they are not there to teach. They are not there to answer questions. They are not there to put the people right. They are not there to clear the confusion away from the minds of the people. Then the enemies and the false people will be speaking to them, and their words will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hermenius and Philetus, and the Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and they have overthrown the faith of some. That's what the Lord is telling us. Stay at home. Stay with your congregation and lead them in the way of the Lord. Don't have divided attention. Concentrate and do what needs be done and be a kind of stabilizing factor, stabilizing pillar for the people of God that has called you to lead. Be of one mind and of that one mind serve the Lord and serve the people of God. Hosea chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 2. Hosea chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 2. Their heart is divided, now shall they be found faulty. As elders, as leaders, over the congregation of the people of God, if our hearts are divided, we're divided between ministry and business, divided between ministry and politics, we're divided between ministry and other extracurricular activities. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. It shall break down their altars. It shall spoil their images for the lord will strengthen our heart the lord will strengthen your heart he'll preserve every local church in jesus name look at osea chapter 12 reading from verse 13 osea chapter 12 verse 13 and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt that's the work of the elder that's the work of the teacher. That's the work of the pastor. Bring them out. By a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. But look at this. The ministry of the prophet, the ministry of the elder, the ministry of the preacher does not stop by just bringing them out. And by a prophet, he was preserved. By a prophet, he was brought out, and by a prophet, he was preserved. The people of God will be preserved under your ministry. Look at chapter 10 of Hosea. We're reading now from verse 12. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground. If you're getting timid, you're getting tired, and you're getting weary, break up your fire ground. Wake up yourself. You have an important duty, an important responsibility. Get the people out of their sicknesses, out of their challenges, out of their problems. It says, break up your fire ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he come and rain righteousness upon you. As you pray tonight, it will rain righteousness upon you. It will inject courage into your life. It will give you a new vision, a new dynamite in your soul and in your spirit in Jesus' name. This work of the Lord will prosper in your hand. I said the work of the Lord will prosper in your hand. 
you become a source of healing to the people of God in your locality, in your congregation, in your local church, and in the church at large in Jesus' name. All the gifts you need, the Lord will give you. All the power you need, the Lord will give you. All the grace you need, the Lord will give you. The weakness of the past is gone. A new day of strength, a new day of power, a new day of courage, a new day of vision. Remember, God puts trust in you. That's why he puts you there. And he directs the people to have trust in you. He said, are you sick? Go to him. I put him there. If he prays for you in the name of Jesus, God assures them he will heal them. And God assures you, if you pray for them, the Lord will heal them. The Lord will deliver them. What are you and what is your amen? Rise up and tell the Lord and thank the Lord who has put you there and thank the Lord who has appointed you and thank the Lord who has ordained you a brother, a sister, a man, a woman. Thank the Lord he has put you there and you will not fail. He has put you there and you will succeed. He has put you there. Do what he has called you to do and what he promised the people that healing will come to them, deliverance will come to them and solution will come to them through you it will come to them i can't hear you pray tell the lord now tell the lord now he trusts you that's why he's put you there he has confidence in you that's why he puts you there and he's even directing the people to come to you He's saying, I put them there, they're the elders of the local church. I put them there, they are the solution bringers in that local church. I put them there, they're the deliverers in that local church. He puts you there, and the Lord is recommending you to the people. Is any sick among you? I put those elders there, go to them. I put those brothers there, go to them. I put those sisters there, go to them. I put my sons and my daughters there, go to them. When they pray for you, you I will answer that's the assurance God has given us that when you pray for those members of the local church God promises he will answer he will answer don't be timid don't be timid don't be fearful don't say how can I do that how can that happen through me the Lord has said it will happen and you will pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith will deliver and the prayer of faith will save the seed and if they have committed sins you encourage them that if we confess our sin that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all the righteousness don't talk negative to them because they are falling don't talk negative because they are backsliding don't talk negative because something bad that happened talk positive let your word bring faith in them that's why god sent them to you that's why he sent them to you that you will speak the word positive word powerful word anointed word into their lives and they will come up they will be well they will be well they will be well don't talk about death talk about life don't talk about darkness, talk about life. Don't talk about weakness, talk about strength. Don't talk about evil, talk about good. Don't talk about something that will bring them down, bury them. Talk about something that will energize them, stir them up, and raise them up. Talk about what God said you will do. He said he will raise them up. He will raise them up. He will raise them up. And you will, and you will, and you will. It's a new ministry for you. Recognize that ministry for yourself. The Lord is sending them to you. Whoever is sent to you this week or this month or now in your local church and he said, I'm having this problem to start with, remember, it's God sending that person to you. And there is assurance, assurance, solution will come to them through you in Jesus' name. It will come. It will come. It will come. You may not feel you have anything more you've got, you've got before. Don't worry about that. The Lord is sending them to you. They are members of your local congregation. It says, any sick among you, call, call, call the elders of the church. They will pray for you. And when they pray for you, I will answer. The Lord will answer your prayer. The Lord has answered your prayer in Jesus' name. And let the elders of the church say, yeah. 
Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for what you have shown us today. Thank you because you have raised, raised us up. You have lifted us up. And you have put us in position, every brother and every sister. Lord, I pray the confidence you have in us will have that confidence in ourselves in Jesus' name. The trust you are put in us, Lord, we pray the members of our congregation too, they will respect us. They will honor us and they will have that same respect for us in Jesus' name. And Lord, as you have commanded, you have told us what to do. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. We're going out with that conviction. We're going back to our local churches with that conviction. What you said will be fulfilled. When you sent the 12 out, they came back with success stories. When you sent out the 70, they came back with success story. You're sending us out. And when our congregation members, when they come to us for any challenge and we pray for them, their problems will be solved. Their difficulties are going to be removed. The sicknesses are going to vanish away. Through your sons and your daughters who have listened tonight and who will yet listen to this message, we pray, Lord, your power will be channeled through every one of us. And Lord, great, great manifestation of your power will come through our ministry to these members in Jesus' name. Our own selves in our personal lives solve our problems. Our own selves in our families solve the problems of our families. And Lord, you said that if I pray for your people, that you will answer, that the prayer of faith shall save the sea. And therefore, I pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice now. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. And any challenge in your family, any challenge in your personal life, any pain, whatever, as the Lord has directed, that I should pray for you and that you will be well. I confirm you well in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, that same authority and that same anointing and that same power you put upon your people. I will go out not with timidity, will go out with trustworthiness knowing that you will do what you have said and lord magnify your holy name in the lives and the ministries and through the hands of all your servants and our elders in jesus name confirm your power through everyone lord as your people go back home go with them protect them let the angels of god be with them and protect them that as the mountains surround Jerusalem, you'll surround every elder, every child of God, everyone you have appointed. And as we go back home, no harm for anyone in Jesus' name. Strengthen your people more and more. Let the joy of the Lord be our strength all the time. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.